Hello and welcome to the Synopsys Optical Solutions Group training series. In this video, we will demonstrate how to import CAD generated surfaces for sequential ray tracing. It is possible to import and use CAD generated geometry in Code 5. Imported geometry can be used for visualization only, as ray traceable geometry in a non sequential range, or, as we will demonstrate in this video, as individual surfaces traced as sequential surfaces. Our demonstration model is a Tessar lens set to image at finite conjugates and is intended to model a forward-looking automotive camera. In order to complete the model, we will add the surfaces of a car windshield which has been modeled in CAD and saved as a step file. The first step in importing the windshield is to open the CAD file in the CAD model viewer. To do this, you can either use the File Import CAD menu pool or you can simply drag and drop the intended file into the Code 5 main window. The CAD model viewer shows the CAD geometry which can be rotated and zoomed in the same way as the 3D viewing window. You will notice that there is a coordinate system displayed. This is the coordinate system for all the CAD surfaces and is determined when the geometry is constructed in the CAD program. This may or may not be in a convenient place for the optical design. In our case, we will have to use offsets to both rotate the geometry and shift it in Y and Z. This is done after the surfaces are imported. The viewer also includes a tree with a list of all available faces in the model. When importing surfaces to trace sequentially, you want to import individual surfaces one at a time. The easiest way to do this is to create a user component of each of the desired faces and rename them with a meaningful name. In the 3D CAD view, we will select the outer surface of the CAD model. Then, in the tree, we will right click and select Create User Component. This creates a user component that we can rename. We will right click on the new component and rename it Exterior. We then rotate the model in the 3D view and repeat the process for the interior surface. Once the user components are designated, we need to save the component as a .cfl file. Back in Code 5, we will create two new surface entries to hold the imported surfaces. We will add a fictitious glass to surface 2 of 52.586. We will also add a thickness on surface 3 of 50 millimeters. This is the distance from the CAD surface's coordinate system to the vertex of the first lens. This will not generally be the distance from the CAD surface to the lens vertex unless the CAD coordinate system is on the surface to begin with or you have entered an appropriate offset to the surfaces to make this the case. For our case, we will also adjust the thickness of surface 1 used for ray visualization and reset the object distance to keep the same total distance. We now open the Surface Properties dialog box for surface 2 and select the Surface Type page. For Type, we select CAD Surface and click Commit Changes. This opens a secondary dialog box for choosing the desired CFL file and also the particular user component intended for that surface. We select the CFL file that we just saved and type exterior for the component name. We can also enter a meaningful label. We will repeat this process for surface 3 
which is the interior windshield surface. After the surfaces have been added, we can rerun the 3D viewer and see that the windshield is in the wrong location. Selecting one of the windshield surfaces, we see the associated coordinate system is aligned with the z-axis of the model, but the windshield has the incorrect orientation. To correct this, we will add a beta position to both surfaces of 180 degrees and refresh the 3D viewer. You can now see that the windshield is oriented properly. It is also possible to place a decenter and return on each of the CAD surfaces and use it in conjunction with the surface position entry to simplify a compound tilt by decoupling two of the angles. Here we demonstrate putting a 20 degree alpha tilt on the surfaces. Using the position entry of 180 degrees for the beta tilt and the descender and return value for the alpha tilt means that both tilts are about the original coordinate axes. X, Y, and Z position values can also be used to reposition the surfaces as desired. Here, we add an offset of minus 100 in Y and minus 50 in Z so that the camera lens is looking through the upper portion of the windshield. Lastly, since the surfaces are now decoupled, it is possible to use standard position and tilt tolerances to model variances in element construction. In this training video, we have demonstrated the use of CAD generated surfaces in a sequential ray trace. We've seen how to prepare, import, and orient these surfaces. If you have any questions or need technical support, please contact us at code 5 underscore support at synopsis.com. Thank you for watching.